What if I told you that your idea of scalping is not what you think it is? Now, I know these guys online are like, okay, enter on the one minute, enter on the five minute. But unfortunately, a lot of them are setting you up for failure. That is why I'm making this video. As I have seen, scalping has become increasingly popular on the internet. And I want to make sure that people are guided in the right direction, right? Because I'm seeing a lot of people talk about scalping on the five minute, scalping on the one minute and getting good entries and doing this and doing that. But in reality, all of this will end up making you fail. Because if you don't put these key things that I'm going to talk about in this video together, then you're going to fail at scalping. So definitely stick around to the end of this video because there's going to be plenty of information and will be worth the watch. And before you guys go anywhere, don't forget, if you're new to the channel, do the YouTube business. And if you guys are returning, you know the YouTube business. Like, subscribe, all that comment really helps. And watching to the end of the video is really appreciated. If you do want to join a Discord channel, that link is in the description. Ask me questions, share charts, get updates. It's the best safe place to be and to ask questions as an upcoming trader. So let me flip this around and let's go on the screen. And let me explain to you how to scalp. All right, guys, so when it comes to scalping, you guys have to understand that scalping doesn't necessarily mean taking trades on the lower time frame. The biggest mistake people make is that they try to take trades on the lower time frame. Unfortunately, taking trades on lower time frames is what's going to end up messing up your trading. It's simply too erratic. Structure is always being broken. You don't know if this is a lower high, lower low. You don't know what's going on. It's always reacting from higher time frame levels. The only useful thing for the lower time frame is to possibly look when to snipe a close in terms of when to take profits exactly. And also sometimes we can use it to try get a more accurate entry, but never as confirmation, right? So your confirmation should never come from lower time frame. So the second thing I'm going to explain here is, okay, when do we use scalping right so scalping is a very effective thing that can help you guys generate income in a short amount of time right this is the personal way that i like to trade and maybe you guys would like to trade the same way as well but essentially to define scalping does not mean taking trades on lower time frames scalping just means to be able to be in a position and out in the most effective move so in this video i'm going to explain to you how you're going to find those effective moves what we mean by effective is we also mean efficient so we want to be in a move that is quick efficient gets us from point a to point b and we can get on with our day 15 20 minute 30 minute trade and that's it max right and the way we're going to do that is being able to have the correct confirmation being able to trade in the correct zones and that will allow us to get to point a from point A to point B as quickly and efficient as possible, allowing us to scalp the market. Now, many people think that scalping is taking a small piece of the market and doing that regular throughout the day. I think that's a very bad practice. The more trades you take per, uh, per day, the more variables you give yourself to lose. And also you have to understand that when we get volume in the markets, all right, at some point, a big move like this. So let's go on the, the 15 minute time frame here. A move like this, let's say this current move that's happening on the chart, at some point this volume is going to die out and you want to be holding this whole move here. There's no reason why you have to scalp and take a position from here to here. Why, why, why is that a scalp? Why can't you hold to this resistance level here, right? And be done for the day because after that, now you can get this inconsistency where you're going to get your losses when you're trying to scalp on lower time frames, which is the mistake people make, right? So you can see after that, until we get a new candle, there might not be volume in here. And then we're looking and now you can see we reach the resistance. And now what happens to ch the chart? It becomes inconsistent. So if we look at the chart, where was the most efficient move? The most efficient move was between here to here. This is money. This is where we want to be involved in. And this is where we want to try catch our move and scalp, right? Because to be honest, taking a trade from here to here is a scalp, right? Because all we're doing is getting in, in and out of the market as quickly and efficient as possible and we're not trying to hold the market let's say we're trying to get an entry on the 15 minute 30 minute and hold it to a higher time frame target the problem with that is and what i see with people trying to do that approach is first of all we don't know when it's going to hit a higher time frame target second of all we normally need to run bigger stop losses we normally need to have bigger stop losses where we can afford for price to reach a small target maybe 20 30 pips pull back go below our entry put us in drawdown then potentially go back in profit and you're losing income to gain more income but it's not an efficient quick move where you can get in get out get in get out 
Today on the charts, actually, there was a clean example. Before I recorded this video, there's a clean trade. So I'm going to discuss that trade as to explain the efficient move and the higher time frame move because this was a perfect example today. But first, I want to explain to you guys how you're going to scalp properly because most of you guys are not scalping properly. So the way you're going to scalp properly is you're going to disregard the lower time frame. Your lowest time frame you guys are going to be allowed to use is the 15 minute time frame for confirmation because that is a time frame that is enough to give you confirmation to take these trades right so when it comes to scalping what we have to do is we have to have near and quick accurate targets and find the most efficient zone so that's what i'm going to teach you guys exactly how to do so let's take this example here right so this is a nice example here first of all we need to identify this is a high profit area zone a zone where we could find the most efficient move why is this a zone where we can find the most efficient move because this is known as an lta i have made plenty of videos on the past on ltas be sure to check out my lta video don't miss out on that otherwise this will mean complete nothing but lta is essentially a clean zone but what i'm going to teach you guys for all you returning viewers before you guys start complaining saying oh he's already told us about ltas no there are different types of ltas a zone that's clean right because this is clean candles here but it's not necessarily an efficient zone because look the same way it move you know 5 15 30, 30 45 one hour one hour to get from here to here 15 minutes to get from here to here so this is a high volume zone why do we know this is high volume because of the the move we had in the past year we can see how aggressive the move was so we can expect an aggressive move in the future so when it comes to scalping and looking for aggressive moves, either we need two things. We either need volume to give us that aggressive move or we need to prove that in the past price, a price moves smoothly and quickly through this zone, which will give us the high efficiency to take these trades. So these are the zone you need to be looking for your scalps. The second part that you have to be concentrating on and is the volume, right? You need to make sure you're trading at times of volume. If you're not trading at times of volume, Hardly you're going to get these quick efficient moves and that's where you'll have to hold drawdown, wait for your trade to play out and eventually it might play out but that's not a scalp. Scalp we want to be in and out. You can check my Instagram. I post most of the trades there that we take on stream and you can see how I take those trades, right? And also if you don't know, we do live stream daily London session. So be sure to join that if you have the time and it fits your time zone. Plenty, plenty of education on there that is for sure. So you can see the efficient move we got here in the future, right? When it comes to finding your entries, all you're going to do is wait for a candle to close in these zones. So I do have my price action entries. It's going to be different every single time because I trade using price action. So this video is not going to be about entries because that I have a separate video on my top three price action entries. But what this is going to do is explain to you how to scalp properly. And if you do like this video and you want me to talk about the entries, right? So if you want me to make a more in-depth video about the exact entries and how to take them uh, on a scalping perspective, right? Similar to the a video I made about the top three price action entries. I'll have the editor pop that up there. There we go. That's the video you need to watch for the top three price action entries. And uh, that's how you're going to know when to enter. But to get the efficient moves, what you have to do is you have to find. So let's take this example. We could enter on this candle down here. This was an entry here, but let's take a basic entry. Okay, a basic entry of price closing above in this range here. We can put stop loss below the candle here and target the next resistance. And this is the next conversation I need to have with you guys is finding relevant and quick targets. You can't be holding a 50, 60 pip target. We're trying to scalp. And this is where session average move comes to play, right? So session average move is based on the week. You guys need to be taking notes. How much did London session move today? How much did New York session move today? And you can average in a week and you'll find that the, the averages in a single push on a 15 minute candle will average between 15, 20, 25 pips, depending on how big our ranges is during the week, right? And that's how you're going to be able to scalp because let's say from here to here, let's take a quick measurement. This range here is around 32 pips, 33 pips. But if you've seen that your average move is around 20 pips before a pullback, then you know if you're entering on the break of this 15 minute candle high at 20 pips, you need to be taking profits because that's the average move that you have. Or what you can do is simply take a one to one. 
right taking a one-to-one -one is another effective thing and especially if you're using fixed lot size then you'll have an average profit target so you can secure at that profit target say let's say to make a equivalent of 10 pips is 14 pips and you're using a let's say for simple calculation a one lot so your average profit is a hundred dollars if you're taking profits at a hundred dollars every single time that is scalping and that's going to build your balance fast right because the worst thing you can do is try hold a position and lose potential income because pullbacks bring potential income so let me remove these drawings and uh, i mean not not bring potential income they lose potential income so let me re remove these drawings and let me show you a perfect example today of how a scalp would work here right so this was today very very simple trade again we get the closure above the range here all right nice closure above the range let's go on the 50 yeah we're on the 15 here so closure above the range target the next resistance and this is where as you can see big candle big candle we get an efficient move and you need to be accurate with your targets don't be trying to hold it up here don't be trying to hold it up there because that's not the efficient move you need to have good targets and the way to find the good targets is going to be to look for the most recent support and resistance right so if you don't know how to mark support and resistance that's not a good you know that's you should know i do have videos on that so check that out but essentially we can go over a few examples of where we would mark support and resistance obviously this would be the first one here you can see when price reached here it had a reaction the next one is going to be if you're scalping you can take the bottom like this and actually look to secure profits at the most recent where price could possibly have a reaction because this can turn into a break and retest for this right could retest this zone because if we draw structure like this where will price come to the lows it doesn't go back to the highs then reject no we can expect it to come to the lows that's why we can mark these zones instead of using uh, the full target up here when we're scalping right so that's the difference between scalping and trying to hold a trade because trying to hold a trade you're trying to fill all the way up to the zone right which you can use and you know you can base that on your strategy and what you think the market's going to do but this scenario here our zone is take profit zone is going to be here at the top of the range this is a setup number one very clean trade here when you break the range and close above and you have a clean candle you can have, can expect the candle to fill the range here stops can be held somewhere like this anything closing back in the range you can manage your trading but look at the efficient move this with volume new york was the efficient move from point a to point b and be done right close at here right be done don't be greedy don't try hold any further than that right that is the scalp why because that is your efficient move but what we can understand here and this is where you can add your higher time frame analysis is is that we are at the bottom of the range so guess what happens if we're at the bottom of the range we can expect price to pop to the top of the range so the difference between a scalp and holding the trade is is that if you were planning to reach the top of the range guess what you still hold this trade but you've had to hold 27 pips worth of profit so let's take a 10 lot you were up around two thousand five hundred dollars now you lost two thousand five hundred dollars this is the equivalent of someone giving you two thousand five hundred dollars right then someone took away right it's equivalent of opening a buy position of 10 lots here and losing another two five hundred right so now you've just lost two thousand five hundred dollars not only that now you go into drawdown of eight pips so now you go down eight hundred dollars and now finally it pays off and you reach this but some days what might happen is if you don't get the volume this might die down and now you're holding drawdown and this is where you make mistakes because now you start changing your ideas you try to manipulate the trade you don't hold it and you say this because you entered on a lower time frame what you do is when you don't see the trade doing something you like you go down to a lower time frame like this and look how the five minute looks now right if i go down to the five minute you're like oh look this is breaking structure now we're here if you know you start making excuses as to why the trade shouldn't be because in real in hindsight now that i'm showing you it's like yeah i, I would have hold that that's an easy trade to to hold uh, i wouldn't have closed when it came back i wouldn't have go break even and this is where you're going to take your losses yes the one time that it plays out is going to be great right the reason why it's going to be great the one time that it plays out is because you're going to get this massive move here right that we can see is pushing nicely and you are going to get that 
But the point is how many times making an efficient move is a lot better because this this efficient move took literally 15 minutes. This move is now taking hours, right? And you don't know if it's going to reach your max TP or not. So expect to have a lower win, win rate. But when you hit the win, it's going to be a bigger win, right? And that's going to be the difference. The other thing is that you can't protect yourself from going break even because you can't move to break even in these positions. It's stop loss or TP because you're trying to hold. So that's the power of scalping is that we can go to break even quickly because we're expecting the quick move. And that's where we can start to add more risk onto the markets because many people don't add uh, risk. I'm not, not many people don't add, but it's hard to add risk when you have to always hold your stop loss full and you can't manage the trade. You basically have the only control you have is when you enter and your stop loss and your TP, that's it. And either one of those has to happen. And if you want to push risk, if you're losing maybe two, three trades and then win one trade, but it's a big trade, then lose two trades and then win one big trade. The problem that happens is that you don't have enough frequency to say, OK, I can repeat this daily, 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 because your trade might take a day to play out and you're stressing at the charts, looking at it for hours or you're trying to set it. You know, you, you put the trade in, you leave the charts, you go do something else and then you come back and see if it's hit your TP. If you work a job, this could be a good strategy, but then I'd recommend going up a, a time frame so it's less stress. Right. But when you're trying to make an efficient move, get from point A to point B and be done, that's where you're going to see your most progress because you'll be able to do that frequently, quickly and add risk and be in and out of the market quick. Because as an advanced trader, what you now understand is fine. I've taken the first efficient move. It's come back. It's created a target for me. I can take the trade with the support creation to go back again. So now I get two trades with the same idea. But some days this will keep pushing. And guess what? I'm going to still hold this until I see this reject. I'm going to still hold this. And that's the day where I get my scalp trade turn into a long term trade. And that's the big difference that people don't understand is that you might be getting big trades here and there. But the day that I get my scalp trade to turn into a higher time frame trade, that's when it's going to be highly, highly, highly beneficial. So that's all I wanted to explain about this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and explained enough about what you need to do to start scalping. So if you have enjoyed the video before you leave, if you haven't subscribed, don't know what you're doing. You're not going to learn if you don't. So consider it. And I really appreciate all of the support. Take care, trade sharp and peace.